to have a calculator here built in C sharp that consists of three text boxes. This one's named txt num1, txt num2, and txt solution. And then I have a couple labels. The first one here is called LDL operation. The second one does not have a specialized name. It's, I took the default of label 2 because we're not going to refer to it in code. This is the main one we're going to refer to, LDL operation. Then I have four buttons, BTN add, BTN subtract, BTN multiply, and BTN division. And what happens for each of these buttons, let me open the code here, is all it does when I click BTN add, it changes the operator that's viewed in LDL operation label, changing the text property. If I click the subtraction button, it's going to put a minus sign in that text. If I click a the multiply button, it's going to put an X in that text. Now I used X here because that's what most users think of in terms of multiplication. Even though X is not an operator, uh, we'll use the asterisk when we're actually coding this. But for display purposes, X probably makes the most sense. And then if they click division, we're going to put a slash or forward slash in the text. Let me run this so you can see how this works. So if I click the BTN subtract button, it puts a minus sign in that label and automatically calculates the value of 5 minus 2. If I click the multiplication button, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, and go back to the plus. Now, remember in that code, there wasn't anything that was doing the mathematical calculation. The mathematical calculation is occurring whenever this text property changes. If we look at the properties, there is a property set up for that label for the text changed event. If we go to our code, here is the procedure that I named my text changed. And what I have here is I'm setting up three variables, num1, num2, and solution. And solution has initial value of zero. And then inside a try catch structure, I'm going to try to catch any errors here. Primarily is if they enter a value in those two text boxes that's not a number, that's going to uh, throw an exception. We want to handle that. So within the try catch, we're going to take the text that's in txt num1, convert that to a double value, and assign it to num1. We'll do the same thing for the text that's in txt num2 convert that to a double value, and assign it to num2. Then I have a series of if-else statements. So if LBL operation.txt equals, remember we use the double equals uh, as our Boolean operator in C sharp. If, it, if the text equals the plus sign, then I'm going to add num1 and num2 and set the property of solution to that value. If that's not true, we'll come down to this else if clause. So else, if it equals a minus sign, we're going to subtract the two numbers and assign that to solution. If that's not true, we'll hit this next else condition. If the text is equal to x, we're going to multiply the two values and assign that to solution. If none None of those first three are true. We're then going to hit this next else condition. And if the text is equal to a forward slash, we're going to divide num1 by num2 and put that into solution. If none of those are true, we get this else statement. This is sort of the default, the catch-all. And we're going to set the solution equal to a null string, quote, quote. And then I'm going to format solution for two decimal places, setting it to string. Now, actually, what's going to happen is this we've never seen actually occur because solution is zero by default. We would just see zero uh, in the solution. And if there is an error, it's going to put nothing in txt solution. If either of the text in txt num1 or txt num2 changes, we're going to also generate the result or the solution. And I simply did that by 
setting the text changed event to the same sub procedure my text changed. So again when I run this, 5 times 2 is 10, but if I change this to 7, it updates automatically. If I change this one, say to 15, it updates automatically. And again I can do division, addition, subtraction, multiplication. So that one procedure of my text changed is being executed whenever the two text boxes change or that label changes for the operation. Here's another C# -sharp application. I have four checkboxes named CBX item 1, CBX item 2, CBX item 3, and CBX item 4. Now remember from the previous bit video, one of the differences between a checkbox and a radio button is radio buttons are mutually exclusive, but checkboxes are not. I may select as many checkboxes as I want and then I can process them. So here's a button called BTN process. Let's look at the code for that button. And again, I'm using an if else structure. I have a string variable named choice, which equals a null string initially. And if checkbox item one is checked, if that equals true, so the check property is true, then I'm going to append to my variable choice the phrase item one. If that's not true, we'll hit this else clause, and now we'll do a test to see if item 2 is checked or not. And if it is checked, we'll append the phrase item 2. If neither of those are true, we get this third else clause. Check to see if item 3 is checked. If it is, we'll put item 3 after choice. And if, if this final one would be item 4 is checked, we're going to put item 4 in that box. And then there's an else clause here that's sort of the default. So if none of those are true, we're going to execute this statement, which is choice plus equals no item was selected. And then we use a message box to show which item the user clicked on or selected. So let's run this. So if I choose item 1, I'm told that I've selected item 1. If I choose item 3, I'm told I was select, I've selected item 3, and then item 4. However, if I have multiple items selected, I'm told I selected item 1, and none of the other clauses are executed, because once it finds one if statement that's true, it's going to ignore all the other uh, else clauses. So what if we wanted to process all of those regardless? Well, we could change our code. Rather than using an if-else, we could simply make these a series of sequential if statements. What I'm going to do is simply take out the else clause. And then this final else will set the condition to if choice equals quote quote, meaning nothing had been appended. Then we'll say no item was selected. So now it's going to execute each one of these if clauses, one after the other. And it won't matter if the previous one was true or false. It will execute each one of these. So let's test this and see the difference. So before, if I had one item selected, it told me which item was selected. But now if I have multiple items selected, it shows me all the items that were selected. So you have to decide as you're setting up your code how you want the if conditions or the decision structures to be executed. If you want to have multiple forks, then you would use an if else if. But if you want to have sequential structures, then use sequential, this, sequential if statements.